Let me show you some tips and tricks for Motorola Moto G56. And the first trick that I want to show you is widget stacks. Although this feature is quite limited, unfortunately, on this phone, it's still doable. And what I mean by that is if you press and hold your finger on the widget, there is a chance that you will find this option, edit stack. And if you drop the widget in this place, you should be able to add multiple widgets into the same place and then you can scroll through them in order to change the widget. So you can have multiple widgets in the same place. So let's press add widgets. Now here's the thing, in order to make it work you can only use widgets that are the same size. So only several widgets can be added into the specific widget and only several widgets actually support this. In some cases this feature uh, doesn't exist for some reason, it might be due to limited widgets or something. Um, but as you can see, if we manage to make it work, we can choose additional widgets that can be added. So let's say I'm going to add this one and let's add one more. Let's say I'm going to add the calendar and then we can just go back. And now we can swipe up and down between widgets like this. So as you can see, instead of um, taking lots of space, we can just place multiple widgets in a single widget space. So, pretty convenient. Now, besides that, you also have access to the modern control center. By default, the control center looks like this, as you can see over here. And you might be pretty familiar with this look. However, if we go to settings, and over here, if we choose home and lock screen and go to control center, you should be able to find the modern style. And then in this case, you can swipe on the right side of the phone, at least by default in order to open this control center. So as you can see, we don't open notifications uh, or uh, we can just straight jump to, um, to the control center instead of going to notifications first. Of course, notifications is still accessible. The notification tray is now hidden on the left side of the screen. So you can swipe on the left side from the top in order to open notifications. And as you can see, these Example, four buttons of the control center in this case are gone, but we can just simply swipe left and right between these, um, between the notification tray and between the, um, the control center. So definitely a worth, uh, option, worth mentioning option as it provides a new look for the control center. Now we're gonna go back to the settings, but this time we want to go to sound and vibration. And over here we can find two cool gestures, such as flip for D&D. If you turn your phone around, you place it face down like this, you will activate do not disturb mode automatically. So if you tend to use the D&D quite a bit, it might, worth, it might be worth using that option. There is also pick up to silence, which allows you to immediately mute the ringtone when someone calls you if you pick up your phone. So if you want to always calmly answer the call, then you can uh, pick up your phone with this gesture enabled and then the ringtone should be uh, muted automatically. Remember to turn this option on over here. Now, another thing is the Dolby Atmos, which is now pretty standard feature for Motorola's. Uh, however, I still think it's worth mentioning because, of course, we can find some customization options. So if we finally see this screen, we can go to settings here where we can find various different profiles. And of course, these profiles can also be customized. So you can use Bass Boost, for example, or you can go to custom in order to create your own profile. And here are some additional options as well. Now, let's go back to the settings. And this time we're going to go to gestures because over here we can find, for example, quick launch, which is the double tap uh, gesture where we can double tap at the back of the phone in order to do something. While this option seems to be enabled by default, we can also go to the settings over here in order to decide how hard we have to tap in order to trigger the gesture and what should happen when we do that gesture when we perform it. In my case, I tend to usually use it for the screenshot. However, you can also open a specific app of your choice. This, we have the full list of apps that we have installed on our phone, uh, so we can essentially open anything. So uh, besides that, if you have trouble with the gesture, if you don't know where you have to tap or how hard you have to tap, 
uh, you can also use this try it out button where we will get the feedback if you double tap the back of the phone. I usually tap somewhere over here with my finger so it looks like this and then you should be able to get the feedback. So this is how it looks like. Let's see if we can get it gently. Moderate. All right. So you get the idea. Besides that, there is also one more gesture that I want to mention, and that is fast flashlight, where we can perform this chopping motion, where we can chop twice with our phone in order to toggle the flashlight. So it looks like this. There we go. And we can turn it off as well. Pretty cool stuff. I'm personally a fan of that motion. I believe this is the best gesture that we have on this phone. Now we're going to go back to the settings, of course. And here, the next thing that I want to show you is the app lock. If we go to apps, you should be able to find the app lock where we can create a password for apps of our choice. So let's say I'm going to set up a simple pin code over here. There we go. And after that, you can choose which apps should be locked. So let's say I'm going to lock Facebook. Let's also lock what else can we lock? And maybe let's choose this app as well. So after that, if you go back to the um, app drawer, if you try to open the locked app, of course, you need to enter the password. Besides that, you can set up the fingerprint sensor. So if you have the fingerprint added on your phone, then you can go to the settings of the app like in order to also use the fingerprint. You can also change the password, password over here or use face recognition. Last but not least, let's go back to the settings, to the main menu. The last thing that I want to show you is more like a safety tip, um, which can be quite useful if you go to security and privacy. Of course, more most of the security um, settings can be found over here in the device unlock when we go to theft protection. I think they are worth enabling and using them. Uh, but besides that, if we go to more security and privacy, we can find this option protects from online scammers where we can be in theory at least protected from phishing websites so over here you can turn this option on and you can also see the list of allowed trusted uh, websites so definitely worth turning on if you don't want to um, accidentally end up on a website that can potentially scam you and that's pretty much it if you found this video helpful or interesting you can leave a like and subscribe in addition to that if you think there are some additional tips that are worth mentioning then you can of course share them in the comments thanks for watching leave a like and subscribe